Teachers, what's the darkest thing you've seen from a student? Our school had a selective mute kid that graduated last year. Kids were calling him Fish Boy. It turns out he was buying fish and killing them in various ways on Instagram based on people's requests in the comments. In elementary school we had a kid with a severe peanut allergy and a teacher caught some kids rubbing peanut butter on the opening of his water bottle. We also had a kid who could describe in detail about how to prepare heroin. Kid seemed down and I asked him to please tell me what was wrong. Not today. But when you're ready. I was his last class of the day and he promised he would. End of the year comes and he told me his brother killed himself. He said he thought about the same many times but always remembered that he had made me a promise. I made him promise to call me if he ever thought he might again and he promised me again. He's doing amazingly well and is about to graduate from college. I had a kid who really wanted his parents to come to his graduation ceremony. But they were both sex offenders and couldn't be on campus. He just wanted someone there to support him. A list simply entitled a list with a few students names and my co-teachers name on it. Was a student with some serious behavioral disabilities on it who admitted it was a kill list. Asterisk edit. Rip my inbox. Lots of people on here who experienced something similar. No this was not recent. The student received appropriate support after this incident. I've got two. I had a student casually tell me about how he pulled the eyes out of his rabbit's head. He explained how there was blood everywhere. This was my first day working as a supply teacher at that school. And my first conversation with a student. I later brought it up to support staff and they were shocked he mentioned it to me. Apparently he killed his rabbit because his mom loved it more than she loved him. The boy was now in foster care. As his mother was a drug addict. He shared a lot of really dark stuff with me that day. Another one, more sad than dark, was at a different school. Students had to write their address for an assignment. But this fourth grade girl didn't know hers. Another student asked me do you know where the so and so motel is? She lives there. Really broke my heart. As this girl was so young and innocent. And didn't really understand how unfortunate her living situation was as she proudly googled the motel and found her address. Really low income part of town. A former student of mine was always the quiet one in class. Taught them for 4 years and I spent a large amount of time trying to get them to open up and contribute to class as their written work was exceptional. 7 years after graduation they emailed to apologize for being quiet and that they didn't want me to think they were stuck up. They were being frequently raped by a family member the whole time and were too afraid to speak out. Absolutely broke me. I teach an algebra class and I was explaining how, in our city at least, your address tells you how far you are from the central streets like a Cartesian coordinate system. A girl, who happens to be my daughter's friend, volunteered to let me graph her address. Three months later a boy got expelled for threatening to shoot up the school. He had her address and written threats to kidnap her from her house. He got the address from that class. Answering questions from Thread. 1. I do not blame myself for the actions of crazy people. He could have found info several other ways. 2. I put my address up first and my daughter's friend wanted to use hers so that they could know the distance between their houses, was the point of the exercise. 3. Kid has zero. Zero percent chance of kidnapping her. I know her family well. Not a teacher but I did do a lot of volunteer work with little kids. One of the 5th grade boys was caught grabbing random girls and trying to pull them into the supply closet and try to kiss them. He was even caught trying to grab their butts or wood out his hand on their seat as they started to sit down. When we finally got to talk to his parents turned out his grandpa was teaching him these things. The weirdest part was when we questioned the grandpa about it his response was who cares. They are just little girls. I was teaching in a tiny community. 13 year olds. This kid's uncle, also a teacher, pulled her aside and she started bawling. Says her teenage brother died in a skidoo accident. We find out a week later that he was basically almost murdered and left for dead by a gang of teenagers and froze slash bled to death. That place was all sorts of messed up. She turned out okay. My first year teaching was like everyone says the worst year. 
The first day of school I'm getting to know the kids by asking them random questions and I ask this one boy what he wants to be when he grows up and he replies with doesn't matter I'm going to end up in prison like my parents. Whoa oh, okay. From there things got progressively worse. He was hearing voices and always threatening to hurt other staff or students. He was hitting his head on walls or windows when frustrated. He came back from spring break and told me the voices told him to kill a cat he found. By the end of the year he was sexually assaulting girls at school. I actually had a year where kids were doing personal narratives and sharing them with a the class, they knew in advance of choosing their story that they'd be sharing with a class. One kid told the story of her dad killing her mom and then himself, which she woke up to on Christmas morning. Another talked about defending her brother in court for beating her dad within an inch of his life when he found out dad was sexually abusing her. The next told about fleeing the cartels after his dad killed one of them to protect him and seeking asylum in America. Let me tell you, kids have seen some shit. As a light at the end of the tunnel. After like five of these kinds of stories in a row. I asked if anyone had a happy story to break all the sadness. This bright-eyed kid popped right up and told about his dog having puppies. And offering them to the traumatized kids. My grandfather was a band director. I was taking a trumpet lesson with him after school. When another teacher walked in and handed my grandfather a suicide note he found from a student I didn't really know. My grandfather left and I went home. And after talking to him later. He talked with the student and the counselor and eventually they got him the help he needed. When we were 12, a classmate of mine was obsessed with another girl. He would brag about his plan to drag her into the boys' bathroom and rape her. As kids, we didn't know what that truly meant or what to do about it. I remember talking about it at recess. Teachers eventually got involved. And nothing ever happened. Thank God. A student of mine was a constant troublemaker and wannabe thug. During a football game. He broke his arm and had it placed in a plaster cast. A few days later, he got into an argument with another student. At the end of the day, wannabe thug jumped the other kid and started pummeling his face with a cast. Wannabe was arrested and the other kid was hospitalized for almost a week with massive facial injuries, two black eyes, a broken nose, multiple lost teeth, and multiple cuts to his face from the beating. There's so many things to say here from a middle school teacher. Here are a few. 1. A video started circulating of one of my students curb stomping a cat. Then a few weeks later, the same student was spreading rumors that they were planning to shoot up the school on the last day. This quickly was taken over by the local police and investigated. 2. I've unfortunately seen way I, I too many students suffer from the after effects of all types of abuse which is truly heartbreaking. 3. Then there is the classic kid that likes to bring weird toys to school like Barbie doll heads and just play with them as if they are the only one in the room. He would also bring water and vodka bottles and honestly think nothing was wrong with it. 4. Saw a kid try to jump off the balcony, school is two stories. Same kid also put their hands aggressively on another teacher. I think the scariest thing is just realizing that there is a chance that you are witnessing the childhood years of a serial killer. One of my teacher friends told me about a student that had super troubled, abusive childhood, had a history of torturing animals and he would make comments to female students about how much he liked their skin, in a beyond creepy way.